All right, I hope my sound is good. Um, I'm recording this and the thing about recording, you can't really tell. Like if I'm live, which is what I do best, if I'm live streaming, I can ask the audience if the sound is good. And if I'm not, you know, if it's not, I can just go. But when I'm recording, you don't know until after you play it. That's so annoying. But anyway, I'm pre-recording this because I wanted to release on YouTube and Patreon. I think I'm going to put it on both um, on the day of my birthday. So I'm pre-recording this. I'm talking to y'all from, well, when y'all listen to it, I will be talking to y'all from the past, but talking to y'all in the future. Oh, okay. Anyway, I wanted to come and share a couple of things with you all. Um, and I hope this does release on the 29th on my birthday. If you're watching this on January 29th, um, at 1.39 this morning, I turned 40 and I want to share a couple of things with you all. It's not going to be too long, but um, I'll probably be back on the 30th, which would be the next day, which on the day that y'all watch it would be tomorrow. Um but I wanted to make sure that I get this released for the 29th to share some things because I have a lot of women who follow the holistic therapy content and women of all ages. And so I, I just feel like sharing some things about my own experiences and turning 40. And even though I'm not 40 yet, I'm a couple of days away. Well, on this day, I am that y'all are watching it, right? Sorry, but just thinking about the way that I've been feeling leading up to turning 40 um, and some things that I think that some of you all may identify with if you have already hit 40 and a lot of the young girls, because a lot of the mermaids are younger. So just some tips for y'all too. I feel like at this point in my life, I feel like I have zero tolerance for dumb shit. And I mean, it's so zero. And I've, I've always been really cutthroat and really honestly, and very quick to cut people off. But now you won't even make it to get cut off. Like, that's really how I feel. And it's there's no animosity. There's no kind of anger with it. It's just, girl, I don't have fucking time, bitch. I don't care. Like, that's the feeling. Anybody in the entire world that thinks they're going to show up in my space and be an inconvenience to me in any kind of fucking way, even if I have to exhale and say, this motherfucker, get on my nerves, you're gone. That's what 40 is feeling like for me. A very happy place. Um, I went through a lot of shit in my first 40, first 39 years on earth, not in childhood, but just during adulthood with being around the wrong people. I feel like now at this point, I've already made the dumb mistakes of allowing abused and crazy and unhealthy, mentally unwell, low self-esteem just just the people that I shouldn't be around because my light is just too bright to be around them. I feel like I've made the mistake of letting those people into my space, whether it was for whatever reason, because I didn't recognize that they were damaged beyond repair or that um, they pretended to be aware of, you know, damage that was done to them and wanting to do something about it or whatever. I think I've made the mistake of doing that. And at this point, there's just no room for any damaged people. And I know that this might sound harsh for some of the um, the younger girls who are not there yet because you're still letting people drain you. I'm 40. It's not happening here. I don't give a fuck what happened to you. And I don't care who did it. You can't come over here with that shit because we don't have time. I have 60 plus more years of my life to go. That shit is going to be so 
drama free and trouble free. Even if I have to move to a fucking cave and get the fuck away from everybody and shut down my internet and be a monk. My next 60 plus years are going to be, I don't care about anybody's trauma. I don't care how your parents beat you. I don't care. Don't come over here. That's what 40 feels like. I don't care. I didn't beat you. Leave me alone. And I've been this way for like the last year. But I think that the difference is when I was expressing it at 39, you could hear like the anger and the frustration. And it was mostly at me for allowing those people to be in my space. It's not even really at them because they're vultures and they're hurt and damaged and they're doing what they are supposed to do. They're trying their best to grab energy from people who have a bright light. Me and a lot of you. And it's been people who are not even a part of my personal life, just random crazy women who stalk me and follow my content and just can't go and talk to their mothers about the damage that they have experienced. Instead, they try to take it out on content creators because, you know, we're right here where we go live and they feel like, oh, I can dump all my trauma on her. Girl, I'm not arguing with you. I'm reporting you to the FBI and, and I'm blocking you and moving on. Like, that's what 40 feels like there's not even any kind of emotion attached to it anymore. There's no more anger at me or beating myself up for allowing the wrong partners or the wrong friends or whatever into my life. I'm giving myself a lot of fucking grace and I'm realizing that people make mistakes. And if there are people that have wronged me in ways that need to be dealt with legally, I'm not letting it go. It will be dealt with, but I just, I'm not going to continue to beat myself up. And I do that. I do that a lot. I will blame myself and beat myself up and say, why the fuck did you do that? You knew that person was trash. You should have been able to identify. You heard in their voice. You saw in their low self-esteem that they were trash and you still let them get too close to you. And now this is what happened. I'm just not going to be able to do that anymore. I feel very much adult now. And I feel like in my 30s, I was still, you know, very young. And I just feel like, you know, I have to give my younger self um, a lot of grace. You know, she was still learning. But we are here now. We have arrived. If you are watching this, because I'm going to try to schedule it to premiere on YouTube instead of posting as a video, or if you are listening to this on Patreon, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I've been feeling like that the entire month of January. It's like the new year came and I was like, yep, I'm going into a new decade. And how do I feel? And what do I want to change? I do that for New Year's. What do I want to do different? What did I learn in this last year? So to all of the younger mermaids, you know, if you're younger than 40, you're on that side of 40, on the below 40 side, you know, try not to make mistakes to get yourself in fucked up situations or to allow people to drain your energy. But when you do make mistakes, learn from them and give yourself grace. It does no, I could be unkind to myself. And I was told that this month in a reading, I got a reading from Theo. Um, and Theo said those same words. And I was like, yep, I've been thinking that. I can really do just a lot of just what the fuck is wrong with you to myself. How are you that stupid to myself? To me, the one person that I love more than anybody. So there's no more time for that. So just give yourself a little bit of grace. A lot of grace. That's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to correct the things that I need to correct and deal with situations I need to deal with. But I'm going to, I'm not going to, you know, be so unkind to myself. So that's one thing. And then another thing, um, and, you know, I really, um, I truly don't care um, if, if the older women think that, you know, that I'm taking a dip. I don't care how you feel. 
Um, I'm vowing to not be one of those older women that lose touch with things. I don't think that that's something that millennials do, though. For the most part, we keep up with what's going on because we remember pagers. We remember, you know, pay phones. We, we saw cell phones become a thing. We witnessed that. So we are used to technology advancing. And I think that's why we can kind of keep up with it. So um, I'm just vowing to not really be like um, a lot of the Gen Xers. Um, they just things just pass them by and they don't, you know, I told you, I think I told you all this before. I was dumb enough to go out on a date with an old dyke and she didn't even know how to use her phone to scan the menu. The fact that COVID hit and there were no more paper menus. That, that just passed her completely by. She didn't understand. She didn't get it. Like that getting completely out of touch with everything and then saying, no, because I'm a rebel. No, you're just old and behind. <laughs> so that's something that I want to promise myself not to let happen to me. That's some advice that I want to give to the younger girls, too. Don't be like Gen X and just, you know, just kind of sit there stuck in your ways. And now you don't even know how to go out and order food. Looking stupid with a big ass square Android phone. Does that make sense? Let me know if it makes sense. When I come back on the 30th uh, or 30th, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to look at y'all's comments. I'm not going to forget. But just let me know if I'm making sense. Another thing that I'm not going to do, and if you're one of the older women and you're doing this, you might want to look into how cornball it is. I'm never going to be those women who are afraid to say my age. And I just want to say something about that. I think that women who don't want to tell their age, they want to cater to pedophiles. They know that men will age shame you for being older because men like children. And so they want to make sure that those pedophile men keep them in their view. That's really, that's really why. Because first of all, girl, you got an old woman face. We know you're old. You know? I don't, I'm not going to be one of those women who are, you know, if I'm 99, since I'm 99. Yes, I'm 90. Now I'm about to be 100. I mean, that's what it is. Also, I'm feeling this year that I'm definitely moving even deeper into my spirituality. Um, this is another thing that I got from my reading with Theo, working more with roots. Um, I'm incorporating that more into my course, even though we already do a lot of witchy work in my holistic therapy course. I think that what we want to do is choose a root or herb to study every month to learn about um the magical uses and how we can use it not only in spell work, but also in healing our bodies. I already chose for February is going to be wormwood. I have a wormwood tincture that I take, um, but we're going to talk a lot about, uh, we're going to talk about healing your body with wormwood, but we're also going to talk about um, using wormwood in spell work. And I'm excited about every month exploring something different, adding that into the course. I'm also adding into my course um, a different goddess for each theme that we have each month. I already chose the goddess for this month, for February. And I'm really, I'm really excited about that, getting more into my spirituality. Also, y'all know that I'm going to be traveling. So just learning about the spiritual practices in different countries, I think will enhance what I know and what I can bring to the course also. And that's another thing that Theo talked about, about me traveling and, you know, and how it was going to uh, deepen my spirituality. So I'm just very, I'm very excited about this 40th year. It just, it feels like everything is going to be good. 
Like everything is going to be the way it's supposed to be. My dog, Mary Jane, is with my friend. This has been my friend since I first moved to New York. She was like the first friend that I made. We were both from the South. She has two kids and they really, really, really wanted to take care of Mary Jane. So I dropped her fat ass off and I told her, you know, after I go and explore the world for a year or two, I might come back and scoop her up. But if they really, really like her, she could stay her ass there. I'll see her when I come see y'all. So she settled. Um, she's in a home. I know she's going to be taken care of. I don't have to think about it. She's not the stranger. Like I said, this has been my friend since I first stepped foot in New York. I think the first day that I was in New York, we made friends at the Covenant House. I was a kid. This was before I even thought about having another dog. And she didn't have any kids. So um, I did that and now I have freed myself up and, you know, everybody knows that I'm dating, but not in a committed relationship. And I let people know, you know, I understand that, you know, we like each other. You're going to have to hop over the border to come and see me. Because the way I have it mapped out, it looks like I'm going to be traveling for like the next three years. I don't know what's going to happen. But I've already planned out what country I'm going to be in and when, and I'm, I'm happy with it. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do my hopping around and bringing different spiritual practices and different spiritual beliefs from around the world into the holistic therapy course and sharing what I learned and taking good care of myself. That's that's my plan for my 40th year. Just being a nomad, being in the wind and sharing the things that I learn in my private space. I hope that, you know, the mermaids who support me are ready for this. I think it's going to be a journey for all of us. And I want to lastly encourage the mermaids to get the fuck out there and travel and see things because there's a whole world. And I've been places. Y'all know I've always been nomadic. Y'all have seen me all the time going somewhere, moving somewhere. I'm always packing up to go. That's been my life. But this is going to be different because I'm really going to be hopping around the world with no address. It's a little bit scary, um, but only a little bit. For the most part, I'm extremely excited and it makes me feel free even thinking about it. I'm ready to get rid of my place. I'm so glad the lease is gonna be up. I'm ready to move out all my shit and just go see what I stumble across in the world. And I'm gonna share that too. Um, I think I'm gonna create a separate channel for that. I was going to share that on Holistic Therapy, but I think I'm going to create just a completely separate channel for all of my nomad life stuff. So if I do that, I'll let you all know. But I do want to encourage the mermaids, you know, even if you have been places, so have I. But there are places that you have not been. None of us have been everywhere. Go see something that you haven't seen. Okay. Go be somewhere that you have not been. I just wanted to share those things. I'm going to go. I hope this does release on. It'll be my luck. This should have released on fucking February 29th. <laughs> like, girl. Anyway, I hope y'all are watching this on January 29th, which is my birthday. Oh, get in the holistic therapy course. We are starting February 1st. I'm going to put this on Patreon too. So if you're listening on Patreon, the course information is... I'm on Patreon more than once. Okay. So definitely take your ass, get in there. And um, again, February, we're talking about Wormwood and a lot of other things. We're doing a vision board party for our 2024. I have a lot of things planned um, and I'm happy with where that is. Um, 
And so I hope to see you all in there, especially the regulars who already kind of know how things go. And of course, even though we're switching it up, there are some things that are different this month um, that I feel will make it more structured. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. So everybody, um, y'all have a good day and I will, I don't think I have any thing else really to share. Just enjoy life. All of the mermaids and listen, the haters too. Listen, go get therapy, you know, to the haters too. Sis, get therapy. It's not worth it. <laughs> Sitting around watching me and waiting to see what I'm going to say when you know you don't like me. You're giving yourself cancer, sis. You are. That hate watching is going to cause cancer to build up in your stomach. Go get therapy. Figure out why you have to watch a person that you don't like. That is very, very damaging. And I know somebody damaged you when you were younger, so you might not know how to do anything other than cause damage to yourself. But that's the reason to seek therapy, too. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being serious. Get therapy. You know? I I encourage therapy. I've had to do a lot of therapy myself and still doing more of it. Um anyway. <laughs> Ooh, I'm I'm such an Aquarius. Y'all have a good one. I'll talk to y'all when I um or when I'm back. Bye.